if you look at all the dietary recommendations that most national guidelines have for acne, so you look at the AAD, the American Academy, or the BAD, the British Association of Dermatologists, what you'll find is that the evidence is not robust enough at this moment in time to recommend dietary changes alone for the management of acne. So the way that we usually tend to caveat that at the moment is there may be emerging evidence, there is an argument for watching this space, particularly when it comes to high GI index foods and dairy, but from a practical point of view, there is no evidence to suggest that just simply manipulating your diet is the best way to look after your acne or any other skin condition for that matter. I'd say as a general rule, first of all, just be very cautious that you don't want to be cutting a lot of things out of your diet. So practical things that we can take home from the degree and the robustness of the evidence that we've got so far is, first of all, there are a small select group of people that may be sensitive to dairy. So if you do want to cut dairy out of your diet and you want to switch to a plant-based alternative, maybe rather than jumping from dairy to oat milk, which is a common swap that I see people making, think about unsweetened soy or almond milk instead. Now, the reason for that is oat milk has actually got a very high glycemic index. It contains maltose, and maltose is a sugar that makes your blood sugar levels rise very, very rapidly. So often what people think is, well, I've cut out dairy, I've swapped it for a plant-based alternative, oat milk is a good one because flavor profile is relatively similar, but actually all you have done is swap it for another high GI index product which may also potentially be triggering acne. So one swap I would say is go for soy or unsweetened almond instead, probably far better for you. The second thing that I tell people to practically do is if they're doing a lot of weight training or strength training at the gym and they're taking whey protein supplements, I think that's one situation where people may benefit again from switching to a plant-based protein instead particularly because the amount of cow's milk protein that you effectively get in a whey protein supplement is actually quite significantly high. We're not talking about a little splash in your coffee or a little bit in your porridge. So that's a second practical swap that you can make out. The third thing that I would say is if you are genuinely thinking of removing things from your diet, you should really do it in conjunction with a professional dietitian. If you start removing lots of things, you may end up with essentially a diet that is missing a lot of important nutrients that you might need for your overall general health, which is obviously a situation that we want to avoid. So I think those would be my top three tips of what you can practically do yourself. The concept of like perfect diet is really quite interesting because I think what the general population perceive as a perfect diet may be a diet such as a vegan diet where there are no animal products and there is no dairy. And I find it really interesting because if you look at the internet, people will say, well, if you cut all of those things out, your skin will theoretically get better. But from a practical point of view, I have loads of vegan patients with acne. And if it was as simple as just simply cutting out dairy or simply cutting out animal meats out of your diet, you wouldn't expect that. No, absolutely. I, I think one really common problem that I see in clinic is it's very normal now for people to go to the internet first for their skincare advice and their healthcare advice before they would seek the advice of a GP or a dermatologist. And if you go to the internet, you know one of the first things you're gonna find is switch up your skincare for acne. Second of all, think about your diet. And the usual culprits are always dairy, gluten, and sugar. And if you look hard enough, if you cut those three things out, according to the internet, you can fix every skin condition going. Now, from a practical point of view, what then does happen is people like to do things that they are able to control themselves. And obviously your diet is something that's very, very easy for you to manipulate at home, in your own time, in your own space. So I see a lot of patients that will cut out huge food groups and usually it is dairy gluten and sugar and it gets to the point where their skin's not getting any better they're getting really anxious about the foods that they can and can't eat and what ends up then happening is people find themselves in a situation where the diet becomes more and more restrictive there is more anxiety around food and almost the development of disordered eating patterns because you become so paranoid that anything that you might eat might trigger your acne and the concern there then is what we don't want to be doing is driving people into a place where their anxiety is leading to problems like orthorexia, anorexia, other restrictive type eating disorders. So I think it's a massive issue. And I do think that a lot of information online is to blame for this.
Yeah, I think if you are going to try and manage your acne at home before you seek professional help, I think actually looking at your skincare routine is a far better starting point than starting to cut things out of your diet. So from a practical point of view, you know, you're looking for skincare ingredients such as your salicylic acids, which can help break down oil production. You're thinking about your vitamin A's or retinoids, again, which can help decongest the skin, benzoyl peroxide, which again is easily accessible over the counter. All of those things do have a role to play in an acne management plan. So I would start with looking at your skincare and your skincare ingredients. Now, if you have changed your skincare up, you've been doing it for a good four to six weeks, but you're still finding that your acne is not getting any better or it's getting worse or it's becoming more extensive. So it's not just affecting the face, but it's extending onto the neck, the back, the chest, the shoulders. If it's starting to scar or leave permanent marking, and about 20% of people who have acne will get permanent scarring, or if it's starting to affect your mental health, you know, it's affecting your day to day and your confidence, all of those then are signs that you should then move on to professional help. You've done what you can at home and you've given that a good bash.